Good morning. It's good to be in God's house this morning. We hope you have come seeking a blessing. We welcome you if you're visiting with us today. And we have a guest speaker today who's somewhat of a celebrity. Some of you will recognize him once he stands up here. I'm going to keep you in suspense. <clears throat> Let's begin our worship this morning by standing and singing a hymn. He lives. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, no matter what men may say, because he lives in our hearts. Let's stand up. You may think of this as just an Easter song, but it applies every day. And how we assimilate this fact into our daily lives it will have a tremendous impact on how effective we are as God's children. So let's sing a, a, it with an attitude of praise and worship this morning as we come together in this house. Father, we do praise you and worship you, Father, because you are a living Lord. You are not an idol that cannot speak. You are alive, and you dwell within each one of us who have become your children through the, accepting the shed blood of the Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. We desire, Father, to allow you to have free reign and rule in our hearts and lives today. So that whatever the circumstances that we face here in this life, we know that we're victorious in the end. It's because you live we can face tomorrow. Join with me as we sing that chorus. 
And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the And life is worth the living just because he lives. You may be seated. We continue as we worship in our time of prayer. Are there any praise reports or prayer requests that need to be voiced openly this morning? Rivers Jones. Melissa Chase. Melissa Chase. Ian. Ian Federoff going to Ethiopia. Stanley. What did you say? Who? John Love Baxter. John Love Baxter. Thank you. Thanksgiving, Brother Robert. He's with us today. Thank you. Praise God. Yes, we're, it's good to have Wendy with us today. We, we celebrate what God is doing and through the miracle of hearing. It was, uh, I sat back there this morning in the auditorium in the adult class and uh, listened to Jan as he just is anointed to, to expound from the word. And it, uh, the lesson today in, uh, in our class was about the different parts of the body and, and how important it was for each of us to allow the Spirit to fill us and to empower us and help us to identify the spiritual gift that each one of us has given. And as he was using the scripture in Corinthians where it uh, tells us about the different parts of the body, though some parts may feel like that they're not uh, important, that they are necessary. And I sat there as I listened and I thought of Wendy and her hearing and how she has struggled with that. And it's such an important thing that when we take for granted the, the, the things that seemed unimportant, yet they are so very important because whenever they don't function right, it hinders us. And it's just like that in the body of Christ, as Jan so adequately taught, that if we do not perform the function and the gift that God has blessed us with, the whole body of Christ suffers because of it. So I, I just uh, was ministered to today, Jan. I do appreciate you being used as, as God's uh, mouthpiece as you taught the lesson this morning. Are there any others? I, I would uh, update you on Miss Pauline, uh, my mother-in-law. She is uh, being, this morning about four o'clock, we received a phone call and she is being moved into ICU and is uh, not doing well. Uh, possibly be transferred to Duke or some other, I, I don't know what the outcome will be, but uh, she's not doing well at all, and we do solicit your earnest prayers on her behalf. Brother Pam, Pam, Pam Waller? Yes, sir? Me, I need prayer to you, yes, brother. Thank you. Yes, it's always a blessing to be able to pass them. I know. <laughs> it hurts. Kidney stones are not funny. Any others? Yes. Yes, uh, Susan's got a load on her, my wife. And uh, she's, uh, she needs our prayers. Any others? And she says, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I'm going to ask Michael Brinkley if he'll come and lead us as we pray this morning. Are there any others as he's coming?
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning and we just praise you and we thank you for everything that you do in our lives. Lord, we thank you for the weather outside today and we just thank you that you, <coughs> that the heavens declare your glory and that we can see you in everything that is made. Lord, we, we bring all the needs from your people to you this morning. And we just know that, we just ask, Lord, that you um, touch them in a special way that only you can. Lord, we thank you for all that you do. Lord, we thank you for our speaker today. Lord, we ask that you just put your words in his mouth and prepare our hearts and minds to receive them this morning, Lord. We thank you for all you do. and We just bless your holy name today. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue as we worship this morning by giving our tithes and offerings. I ask our ushers if they will to come forward. Let's once again go to the Lord and ask his blessing upon our tithes and offering. Dear Heavenly Father, again we come before you throne, seeking you, Lord, and seeking your will in each of our lives. We come with you, Lord, with open hearts to receive the message today that you would have us to hear. We ask now your blessings upon our tithes and our offerings to, back to you, so that you, they may be used to serve you and, and support your work here on earth. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. through the announcements that we have this morning. There are several. Uh, I asked Danny to project them for us here so that I won't omit some. Basically the same schedule. I would ask Michael uh, there will not be men up this week. Is that correct? No, sir. 
Okay. So, all right. So uh, Tuesday night at 8 p.m. the men up group uh, will not meet. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Uh, fundraising luncheon will be the last Sunday of this month. That's on May the 31st, following our worship service. We, uh, Seven dollars per meal, and we encourage you to plan to participate in that. Uh, these funds that are raised at this time will be used toward the expanding the, the ministry here at Bethlehem. There is a planned trip on June the 6th uh, for sixth grade and below, traveling to the North Carolina Aquarium at Fort Fisher. There is a sign-up sheet in the foyer. Does anyone have any additional comments that you'd like to make about that? If you're riding in the van, I have the sign-up sheets. There are two that you need to fill out. One's for medical and one's just saying you're going to go. It doesn't need to be um, notarized or anything like that. It just needs to be signed and all the information filled. Um, so far, I've got Cassidy, Gavin's going to ride in the van, um, Karen and your three are going to ride in the van. Um, if you haven't signed up, I need you to sign up, definitely if you're riding the van, and come get the permission forms from me, okay? Thanks. Save the date for the church picnic, June the 27th. There will be more on that to follow. More details uh, should be forthcoming. I would encourage you, uh, back to the men up, uh, I would encourage you men, if you have not participated, if you have neglected this opportunity, don't continue to pass it up. It is an awesome thing for the men to get together and, and fellowship and be challenged by God's word to become more of the man that God has in store for us to be the the husband the father the mentor if we're not a father or a husband yet there's there's just an awesome privilege and responsibility that we have as men to be leaders in our homes in our communities and at, at our workplaces so i encourage you as you hear more about this to to plan to be involved in these events of course, the blast group is always uh, a, a, a time of learning and uh, a challenge. And I, I hear the I hear I'm not usually back there in that building at the time it's going on, but I hear that they get quite rowdy at times. And the preacher is right in the middle of it. I understand. <laughs> so they're not misbehaving, parents. Uh, they're just sitting back there doing, like it says, cool stuff. <laughs> and of course, uh, Crossroads is the 7th through 12th grade, and I encourage you, for the kids in this community that are not churched, that you reach out to them and bring them here to get them involved in this so they can be challenged and, and to grow in their relationship with each other as well as with the Lord. Again, there is a sign-up sheet in the vestibule or foyer for you to uh, become involved. There are several, and I thank you so much for the those who have signed up to become involved in ministering and assisting our sister church, uh, Cedar Fort Missionary Baptist Church, here right down the road as they do the Celebrate Recovery Ministry. We're joining and teaming up with them as, as they uh, work in this ministry, uh, and it is an awesome and tremendous privilege and opportunity that we have. I want to share this with you. Uh, this was in the bulletin last week, and I did not mention it during the announcements. This is a note from the pastor. He wanted to express his thanks for what has been done uh, as the outpouring of love and, and all that uh, occurred at, from the death of his father. I got this. Uh, you can see that it was sent this morning at 12.31 a.m. from uh, the pastor. He says, I'm missing you all like crazy and praying for services now. So at, at beginning at 12.30 this morning, uh, we're having prayers uh, for, for our, the, the service here today. And uh, so he is on, will be on his way home, and we should see him here next Sunday. So lift him up in your prayers. Is there any other announcements that need to be made? 
I would uh, uh, encourage you to look at the back side of your bulletin for the uh, children's home needs. You remember, we do have the little blue bags that we got challenged with last week. It would be nice to see some of them that are so full that you couldn't fill them up or couldn't close the top on them. That would be awesome. We'll be taking up that offering on the last Sunday of the month. But there are some supplies and needs of that nature that are listed in, in the bulletin in the green text. And I point you, your attention there to look at that list and see if there's any that God lays on your heart that you would respond to. Okay, just really quick, by default, I'm up here this morning. Um, regarding the chicken dinner, uh, two weeks from now, please come. We're going to have some good old fried chicken and stuff for lunchtime. It will be directly after church. And this is a fundraiser to go towards the building fund. You do not have to sign up in advance. If you don't know if you're going to be here or not, you can pay at the door that day. And also, um, just real quick, on the children's home, the ladies' auxiliary is taking up supplies. And I know you say you don't have a lot of money, and a lot of us don't. But I was sitting here thinking about it. If everybody in this building this week bought one roll of paper towels, that would be over 100, probably over 100 rolls of paper towels. Or one tube of toothpaste, or one toothbrush, or one bar of soap. Think about how much that would be. And when you're raising 35 to 40 teenagers every day, 365 days a year, they go through a lot of that kind of stuff. So even if you don't think you can afford a $300 microwave, every little bit helps. Because alone we can do so little, but together we can do a lot. She didn't do it, so I've got to. <laughs> First Christian Church cordially invites your presence and prayers for the ordination to Christian ministry of Kimberly Holly on Sunday the 17th of May at 5 o'clock in the evening. That's this evening at 5 o'clock at First Christian Church, 124 Trot Road, Richlands, NC. Reception to follow. So. Uh, join in if you can uh, in that celebration uh, and uh, ordination service. Uh, any other announcements? I ask you to stand. Greet your neighbor as the choir comes forward.
Good morning. Uh, our guest speaker this morning, of course, when he gets up here and turns around and faces you, you'll know and recognize him. But this morning, he's here as the Reverend David Sawyer. Um, he worked for WNCT for 25 years and has entered the ministry full time and is still part time with, with WNCT. He's married to his wife, Kathy, and I think she's delivering a message in the opposite direction this morning, and the reason she's not here. Five children, three daughters, two sons, ranging from 10 to 22. And I told him this morning when, we were first, when he first got here that he doesn't look old enough to have a 22 year old. <laughs> and uh, television's been good to you, I guess. <laughs> so, welcome this morning, Brother Sawyer. Uh, please come and deliver the message that I'll God's put upon your heart. Thank you, my brother. Good morning, everybody. Warm welcome, of course, it is about being together with family. Um, what a joy to be able to gather in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, and this awesome day that he has made, and what a joy it is to be able to come to you. Yes, indeed, I do rejoice uh, in the, uh, the blessings, the hospitality, and thank you so much, brother, for making my day with your uh, kind words. Um, I'm 49. Uh, but good Lord willing, I've, I've got uh, as much time as God has ordained for uh, each and every one of us here to proclaim the good news. And that's why uh, I, I would like to just take just a moment just to give you a brief snapshot of, yes, the, the calling, uh, the answer that God has been cultivating in my heart for a, a long time, actually. It's been a beautiful tapestry that he has woven, uh, making me aware of the the beautiful preparation of my heart. It's been an honor to serve Eastern North Carolina as a broadcast meteorologist. I do take a lot of joy in sharing with many people uh, the, what we believe the weather might do, because I want to emphasize one important thing. <laughs> I am so thankful that I am a predictor, not the producer. So as we worship the producer of all things, yes, indeed, he does indeed control and rule the winds and the seas, and they obey him. Let's now go to him and ask his blessing, continued blessing on this. And, and before I go to prayer, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't say this. So honored to be invited to come and to be able to share the, the, the word today. We pray that uh, God would, um, would use this time of, of soaking deep in his word to be able to be encouraged as well as challenged. But I will say, interestingly, I'm always amazed but never surprised, dear friends, because any time I am so honored to be invited to, to come as I am, for example, today, to be able to share the message from the word of God, it absolutely amazes me of how the Holy Spirit, he, is the one that orchestrates so beautifully. Because I believe in my heart, and I pray this to be the case, when we leave from this place today, you will see a perfect, awesome tapestry that the Holy Spirit has indeed put together from the beginning of this time of worship to the time we walk through these doors to serve and to continue to seek Him. So let's now go and seek Him together, asking God's continued blessing, continued blessing, as He's already done upon our time together this morning, worshiping our risen Lord and Savior. Father, we do come to you right now in the name of the risen Savior Jesus Christ. We proclaim, yes, he is, he is risen. And we thank you so much today for this opportunity now to soak deep in your word, Father God. We thank you so much for your word. We thank you for the living word, Jesus Christ. You proclaim to be the living and active word. And Holy Spirit, we pray now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts collectively as your children, the body of Christ, Father, we pray that you will anoint these words today to encourage as well as challenge us, Lord, to further seek you and to understand more of all that we have in you. 
forever and ever. Forever and ever. It's in Jesus' precious name that we humbly come to you now and pray. Amen and amen. Two passages of scripture. It's interesting, again, I'm going to say this probably several more times, but I'm just so encouraged today. I see on the worship guide that I was given this morning that Bethlehem Church is indeed a great commission resource center. Well, you will note that one of the passages of scripture that I know the Lord has placed upon my heart to share today is that the passage of scripture called and known as the Great Commission. We're going to read that one, and also we're going to look into the book of Acts. So if you have access to a Bible, I encourage you to first open uh, to go to the Word of God in the book of Acts. We're going to talk about Jesus' response to the resurrection, and I want to be sensitive to the slides on the technology. Isn't technology? Can't it be great? It's just so awesome. Um, If you have the Acts passage first would be great, and then we can go to the Matthew chapter uh, and um, the, the, the conclusion of the book of Matthew. Let's go first to the uh, book of Acts in that first chapter. We see beginning with, with verse 3. The word of God says here in the book of Acts that after his being Jesus' suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was indeed alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days. I want to pause right there for just a moment as I reflected on the message, putting the final touches as I sought the Lord. Isn't it interesting that this past Friday was 40 days past our celebration of Easter? So it is a very relevant word of God to us this week. At 40 days, that period of time that Jesus revealed himself and made and gave many convincing proofs that he is indeed alive. He spoke to them further about the kingdom of God, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about the kingdom of God and what we are called to do in his kingdom's work. Well, as we move forward through those verses, we realize on one occasion while Jesus was eating with his disciples, he gave them this command. He said, don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father has promised which you've heard me speak about. That is so important, brothers and sisters, because that father, that promise the father is giving to each and every one of us is the promise of the Holy Spirit, which interestingly, next Sunday, as the Christian church celebrates, that is the Sunday of Pentecost. Traditionally, the Jewish festival of the Feast of Weeks, when the Jews originally celebrated the reception of the law, the Torah, the Pentateuch, the five books of the Old Testament, the law. You know, it's interesting. It's interesting and no coincidence here. When Jesus Christ was risen and he said, it is finished on the cross of Calvary. What he was saying is the word, the word, the law was completely fulfilled at that time. And he said that not one iota, not one little bit of the word of God would not be fulfilled. So as we celebrate next Sunday, as the tradition of the Christian church, we celebrate Pentecost when the disciples receive that gift that the Father had promised. The good news, brothers and sisters, today that we have that same promise. Someone that has asked Jesus Christ to be his or her personal Lord and Savior. We have also received that same promise. And I would, I would encourage you today, dear friends, as we talk about the word and we study the word together, I pray that the Holy Spirit, this promise, will not leave your heart or mind the entire time because that is the good news that I present today through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And so what we're going to do is realize that this promise, this Holy Spirit, How many of you, and when you set out to do a goal, just a quick little survey, if you will, how many of you like to be encouraged to step out into the new day and say, you know what, I'm going to go out and I'm going to set forth and accomplish the goals that I want to get done today? How many of you all like that type of positive outlook as we go out? Now, at the same time, let's be real with one another, as I pray that we always will be. How many of you, and I'm going to start by raising my hand first, have you gone out 
with the daunting tasks, whatever that may be of the day, and you have to keep fighting this fact, I just don't know if I can get it all done. I don't know if I can get it accomplished. Have you ever been there before? Thank you for your honesty and your transparency because that's why we are gathering today because this is the good news, dear friends. This is the good news. On our own, we're going to see in the Word of God today that on our own, Jesus says that apart from Him, we can do nothing. So, to an ear that doesn't have the sensitivity to the Spirit, that's, that's, kind of a, that's kind of discouraging to those that don't understand what Jesus was saying. But the good news that I pass along today, and I pray that this will resonate, that it will speak to your hearts and will activate in your minds, and then from there go forth in action, is to realize what Jesus is really saying to us is the best news he could give us. That apart from him, we can't do a thing. But in him and him working through you and me, we're going to see also that we can do all things through Jesus Christ, Amen. the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. that lives and dwells in each and every one that has asked him to be his or her personal Lord and Savior. So that is good news here. So as we look on part of the rest of the passage of Scripture here, John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, referring to that next Sunday called Pentecost. And realizing also, um, it was on my part, but I would like to read one more uh, little bit of the verse here. Realizing when they met together, it is not for you, he said to the disciples, when they asked him, Lord, when is the time we're going to restore the kingdom of Israel? And Jesus said to them, it is not for me, to, it's not for you to know the times or the dates. The Father has set by his own authority. But I will finish with verse 8 here. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You know what's interesting is I read the Gospels and I read about the accounts of the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I encourage you, and I know you probably have already done this, but I encourage you to do it again. Going back to Brother Verney's point today, as he testified, one Holy Spirit speaks. He challenged us, and I want to echo that. That today is Easter Sunday, just like 42 days ago. Because every day is Resurrection Day for the believer and the follower of Jesus Christ. Because that's the good news that we have. We have the good news. We have the Holy Spirit. And it's this power. It's the Greek word dunamis, where we get the word dynamite. It's the word that can go forth from you and me. And to be able to share this good news in the power of of the living God that lives and dwells in each and every one of us. Because Jesus said, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea, Samaria, and then where? To all the entire earth. That includes Eastern North Carolina. Praise him. So let's now go over to the Great Commission as we see in the book of Matthew where Jesus also is charging them before he ascended into heaven. I would like to invite you to again go back and read that passage of scripture on your own in your quiet time. Realizing that as I read this passage of scripture, just prior to that, we see clearly evidence of reality. Those that had even witnessed the risen Lord, it says that there were those that still doubted. That's interesting. Because even those that saw the risen Lord still had doubts. But I want to turn that into a really awesome positive today. Because once again, dear friends, I confess to you that there are days that I have struggles. There are days that I have doubts. My wife and I have stepped out of the boat, if you will. We have asked the Lord Jesus, Lord, are you asking us to follow you to put down our nets and make us fishers of men? See, the good news today is there are still those times where we are in reality. And there's times when we want to look down at the waves 
And at that point, the waves are the ones that are going to try to take us over. But guess who's right there? As we see in the parable, where Peter started to sink after he looked down at the waves and noticed the winds and the waves, they were overwhelming him. Jesus was right there to place his hand and lift Peter out of the water. That's good news. Because in our doubts, in our temptation to fear, and that's the key word there, there is no fear in perfect agape love, which we're going to conclude with today. We're going to see that the, the love of God that is presented through Jesus Christ, God himself, we realize that we have everything we need. So as Jesus spoke to the disciples in Matthew 28, 18 and 20, it is recorded, Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Would you pause right there, and if you have your Bible with you, I encourage you to highlight that fact. Teaching them to obey everything that Jesus has commanded his disciples. And surely I am with you always. I am with you always, says our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to the very end of the age. Always. Always. Let that word just resonate in your heart. Always. He will never leave us or forsake us. We shared our prayer time just a few minutes ago. What a real time that was. Encourage me? Yes, indeed. Because I see a body of believers here that are relying and abiding in that peace, the one that is with us always, to empower us to teach and to what? Obey everything that he has taught us. So let's now take those two passages of scripture as our principal text today, dear friends, and let's see the challenge that I pray that God will speak to each and every one of us today, because it may very well be unique. It's all one message but it's going to have different applications. Because as also was testified today, we are all members of Christ's body. And every single one of us has a unique purpose and calling. The ministry that I am now involved in is a, uh, it's a, it's a nonprofit um, parachurch ministry called With Purpose International. And With Purpose International's mission statement is to cultivate opportunities for every person that we meet, minister to, and disciple to first of all recognize there is only one way, and that is Jesus Christ. And when that is established, as we have mission locally, nationally, and specifically internationally in Eastern Europe, where there has been years of darkness through atheistic communism, Our mission trip is coming up July the 20th through the 31st. It's an annual mission trip. I would covet your prayers as the team goes and ministers to this portion of Eastern Europe. We start out in Prague in the Czech Republic, and then we go from there around the continent. God is at work through With Purpose International, and it's an honor to join him in that kingdom work. So let's now come back to the local. Let's come back to the local and see, God, what are you telling, what are you teaching me today about this great commission to go out and to make disciples of all nations? Well, I see here clearly to teach everything God has commanded me. Well, I have to know what that command is. Well, to know that simply means As I see, and I pray that you see, I would invite you to write down 1 John 2, 3. The epistle of John in the first book, the first epistle, 1 John chapter 2, verse 3, 
The Apostle John writes, We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. Well, to know what he says in these times is to know the word. And we clearly see through the scriptures that Jesus Christ is the word of God. So to know what God commands is to know the Word of God, to know what He's saying. And this is the good news. To know the Word of God means to know God Himself because it is also proclaimed in John, the, uh, the Gospel of John, verse 14 of the first chapter, the Word became flesh and made his dwelling with us. Jesus is the living word of God. So how do we know the commands? We have to know what the commander says, right? Let's put that even in a, in a, in a context that, that we, I know can put, I can put my arms around. When I was growing up playing athletics, to know what the coach wanted me to do, I had to do what? Listen to the coach. Those that are serving our country faithfully, defending our freedoms here in the United States, has to know what the commanding officer is telling the soldier to do. Jesus Christ, our commander-in-chief, Jesus Christ wants us to know what he commands so that we can go out and do what he commands us to do. But I go back to the premise and the principle and the foundation. And yes, it is the rock of Jesus Christ. I go back to Jesus Christ when I come to the understanding myself that as I struggle with not being necessarily able to do on my own. Oh, wait a minute. Jesus, you said in your word that apart from you, I can't do it anyway. That's why Jesus says in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. The Old Testament proclaims the same thing. The Old Testament proclaims that the only way to be righteous is to have faith. Habakkuk 2.4. The prophet Habakkuk proclaimed what God told him to say. And it's recorded in the second chapter. Habakkuk 2.4 says, The righteous shall live by faith. You see, I am only righteous, not because of what I do. I am righteous because of who lives in me. Jesus Christ is the righteous one. Oh, there is sweet surrender right there. Woo! <laughs> I am all of a sudden feeling the freedom. Because now it's no longer the legalistic approach of I've got to do this and that and that and that. And you know what ends up happening? When we stumble and we fall, you know who then gets on our backs? The enemy who says, you can't do it. But there's a great Christian song today that many sing that says the voice of truth tells us a different story. The voice of truth is saying, don't be afraid because this is for his glory. With all the voices talking to us, dear friends, I'd like to encourage you today to listen and believe Often, it may be a still, small voice, but it is Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and our Savior, commanding us to not be afraid and to move forward. Yeah. Another reference for you in Romans chapter 3, verses 22 through 25. Romans 3, 22 through 25 says this. This righteousness, yeah, let's go back to that for just a minute. This righteousness... Jesus Christ, the righteous one, 
This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There's no difference, as I read on, for all have sinned and we have fallen short of the glory of God, every single one of us. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and we are now justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith, faith in his blood. So action point. Jesus says, if you do what I command, if you continue in my word, you are my disciple. Because in my word, you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. So as we also recognize who we are, let's be encouraged today. Let's be encouraged today on this day that we celebrate the resurrection. Responding to the resurrection. Do you know him? And if you do, do you trust him? I believe and know that there are many awesome people in this gathering today that say yes to both. So now let's move forward. And the two action points today that I invite you to prayerfully consider is what God himself says through his word. In John 15, 12, John 15, 12, Jesus says, My command, oh, there's the command. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. The Greek word there is agapeo. The only one that can demonstrate unconditional love is God himself. He is love. He is agape. And recognizing this, love each other as I have agape loved you. Loved you enough. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay his life down for his friends. And that's what Jesus did. That's what he did. He paid the penalty that you and I could never, ever, 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 ever pay for on our own. That's the gospel. We've sinned, we've fallen short, but God, but God, hallelujah, Hallelujah. but God in his perfect plan did not leave us in that pit, but he paid the penalty in full for you and for me, and that freedom, that free gift called grace is available to each and every single person living and breathing person on this planet today. That fires me up. (laughs) That says let's go forward and let's teach the command to love each other as Jesus has loved us. There's a song that also says, they will know we are Christians by our what? By our love. We can substitute agape there. Oh, but wait. The only way I can have agape is to have agape. You see what I mean? The only way I can love as Jesus loved is to have Jesus. Confession time again. There are those that I find hard to love. Yeah, that's being real. But Jesus commands me to love. Because you know what? This is, where the, this, is, this is where the tire hits the road for me. The Word of God also says that I was an enemy of God. Yeah, that's right. But while I was an enemy, while I was a sinner, God initiated Christ Jesus died for me. That's why Jesus commanded all of us to love and pray for our enemies. 
Because I was an enemy too at one point. But by his grace alone, I have been redeemed. I am saved. I have been set free by this awesome gift of his divine grace. So we are to love. Action point number one. We are to agape. But keep in the heart, in the forefront of your mind, dear friends, that to agape means we have to have his righteousness. We have to have the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus commanded his disciples, stay in the city. Stay right there until you've received the gift my Father has promised. Because apart from me, you can't do it. You can't do anything to advance my kingdom work. Agape, love. And the second takeaway for today, there's so many, but I've chosen two. The second takeaway is to have that love, to be able to apply that love, is to surrender to the one, the Holy Spirit. Jesus says that we're clothed with this dunamis power. The Greek translation for that, friends, is as we see also in the same writer of the book of Acts, believed to be Dr. Luke. In the Gospel of Luke, at the end of his Gospel, God inspired him to write and record and quote this from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In Luke 24, 49, Jesus says, I'm going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with dunamis, dynamite power from on high, the Holy Spirit. Are you clothed? The Greek translation literally means to fall into a beautiful garment, a priestly garment, if you will, because it's his righteousness that is now around us. And we're, in, we're, we're clothed with this power to recognize now the reality of this. John 15, 12 says, love each other as I have loved you. A little before, John 15, 5 says this. Jesus says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. If a man remains, abides. The Greek word there means to remain, to stay. It also means to endure. And that's important. Because times can be tough. Remain. If we abide in Christ, we will bear much fruit. Because if a man remains in Jesus, Jesus says, if a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. This is a great part of Eastern North Carolina. Would you say the Scuppernon grape is a delicious little treat? Muscat Carolina's too. I attempt to grow grapes in Greenville, North Carolina, where I live. Have a great, awesome relative, Uncle Bill, who's helped me along the way to teach me how to be a good gardener. I come from a family of farmers and teachers. And Uncle Billy points out to me two key things to growing good grapes. Lots of sunshine. And pardon this, but I think it's perfectly appropriate. Do you have the sun shining on you? But it's even better, because Jesus claims to be the vine. And I know this for a fact. I have a little puppy, old Gus. Gus loves to run around the yard. And when little Gus hits one of my grapevines, 
Sometimes he'll hit a branch. And if the branch gets broken, and if it even falls off, you answer the question. Fill in that blank. What happens to that, what happens to that branch? It perishes. Dear friends, the good news today is if you are in Jesus Christ, nothing can snatch you out of his hand. But here's what God does say. Jesus says, I want you to be in me. I want you to abide in me because I want to empower you to go out and do my work because my work will be revealed through the fruit. The fruit. The fruit of what? The fruit of this dunamis power. The fruit of this Holy Spirit. Do you? I know. I guarantee, body of Christ, you know the first word in the description of the fruit of the Spirit. It is beginning with agape love and continues right on through with all the attributes. And as we look at the fruit of the Spirit, the description of the fruit of the Holy Spirit living in and through us, look at the list. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness. Staying power, even self-control. Are those winsome? Think about that. Do you like being around someone that has those attributes, that has those characteristics? I sure do. I know we do. And the world does too. But they have to know. They have to know that the source of your fruit is the dunamis power living in you and through you. Because when we abide in Christ, we will bear many grapes or whatever fruit you decide to fill in that beautiful, beautiful passage of Scripture. It is one Holy Spirit. It is the fruit of the Spirit. Love and abide. The only way we can have the agape love of Jesus Christ to share with a world that desperately needs a Savior. Oh, yes, the harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few. Will you be challenged today to go forth from this place and to recognize that, A, I am chosen to serve my risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Will you also recognize the fact that right now, today, God is commanding us to do His work. We have to have His power. Will you obediently surrender all to Him God, I pray that you'll get David Sawyer out of the way. Because this old flesh on its own is dead. But you, Holy Spirit, you live in each and every one of us. As we close today, in our time of dedication, our time of to prepare. In this invitational hymn, I invite you, this is you and God, to ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, where would you like me to go? Lord, today, I've heard your word fresh and new. I want to rededicate. See, we worship a carpenter's son because Jesus fixes things. If he is not your personal savior, I pray today is the day you ask him <coughs> to receive that dunamis, incredible, awesome power that will give you the joy that you've never, ever, ever imagined. 
And those of you and those of us that do have this dunamis power, the Holy Spirit living in us, will you be encouraged and challenged today to live the gospel in this coming week? To those that desperately need to know the truth that has set his children free. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we as a body of Christ all say together, amen. Thank you, Brother Sawyer. You have spoke the truth from the Word of God today. We have been blessed and fed as we have gathered here in this room this morning. Thank you for being willing to be an instrument in God's hand and blessing us here. Is there anything that anyone needs to say openly before we dismiss? Let us pray. Father, it's been good to come here in this room this morning to fellowship with my brothers and sisters in Christ, to sing praises unto your name, to pray, making requests, pleading, 
for your blessing and anointing, your provision for our needs, for the covering that we each need of the shed blood of Jesus Christ to make us holy in the sight of Almighty God. Now, as we have heard your word, Father, may it not fall on deaf ears. May the evil one not distract us and take away that that we have heard. But may we take it in and process it, meditate upon it, and act on it as your spirit leads. That we can be fruitful as we are attached to the vine. And that we will bear much fruit in this community, at our jobs, wherever you lead our feet to trod. Thank you, Father, for the privilege that you have given us to come here together today. The privilege that you have given us to go out into this world and shine the light of your love, that agape love that no one can argue about is pure and right and holy and desirable. Father, help us not to be ashamed, but to be bold and proclaim it wherever we go. Bless Brother Sawyer and his family, Lord. Thank you for sending them your way, this way today, Father. Just pray your blessings upon them and their ministries as you lead and guide them. Bless us now as we go out into this world, Father, to be examples of your love wherever we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed. <laughs>